is this webinar. Hello. Hello, folks. Hi, um, I'm Dino. Uh, I'll be your host and moderator for this uh, webinar on bas basic asset management. Uh, before we start, and like uh, people that have attended those before know the routine, I want to mention that we will be waiting a couple more minutes to allow all invitees to join in. And so uh, let's put that on hold, and we'll be back in about four or five minutes. All right, thank you to all. If there are any comments or issues with your sound, uh, please submit a comment in the Q&A section. Thank you. Just uh, to repeat for those who just joined us, first off, welcome. And uh, second, we'll be waiting uh, a couple more minutes to let everybody in before we start. So we should be uh, going in in about three minutes or so. All right, thank you. All right, so uh, let's start. Uh, I'm seeing people that are already comment commenting and, and thank you for uh, for putting comments in there and wishing everybody a good day. Uh, uh, so before we start, just to let you know, um, to remind you that uh, we will be taking questions related to the subject matter, which is basic uh, asset management. Uh, we'll take them via the Q&A um, button that you have at the bottom, the function that you have at the bottom of the Ring Central video conference um, software. I think you see it. It's got Q and A and an interrogation point there. Um, so I'll be moderating the question period after the presentation. Uh, I would urge all to send questions that are related to this webinar only. Should you have any questions related to other subject matter, I would encourage you to contact our support team, as you know. The support team is available by email, chat, or phone call. Um, without further ado, though, so let me introduce you to your trainer uh, for today, Michael Morocco. Michael is a product specialist with GenXCore, and he will guide you through this webinar. Michael, take it over. Perfect. Thank you, Dino. And thank you, everybody, for joining today's webinar on Basic Asset Management 101. 
Today, we will be reviewing the following items so that you have a clear understanding of the importance of utilizing the asset features within your maintenance care software. One being why asset management is crucial. Uh, two being the types of assets. Three, how to create assets in the maintenance care software. Four, how to tie assets to a task. And five, how to extract important reports on assets. So why managing assets is crucial. The goal of asset management is to maximize the value of an investment portfolio over time while minimizing risk. Now, risk can be defined in two ways. One being life and safety risk, as you will be maintaining the certain asset to ensure proper use. And two being your financial risk. By maintaining your asset, you will increase the life expectancy and minimize the frequency in which you will need to replace the equipment. Finally, asset management is crucial for maximizing the value and performance of a company's physical assets, such as real estate, equipment, and infrastructure. Proper asset management involves identifying and prioritizing the needs of the asset, maintaining, improving, and disposing of the item if and when necessary. Types of assets. So when we talk about types of assets, we're generally referring to six different categories. Current, fixed, tangible, intangible, operating, and non-operating assets. Maintenance care users mainly focus on the fixed, tangible, and operating assets. These can be anything from the physical building itself, the equipment within the building being the furniture and fixtures, machinery, or even mobile assets like vehicles. It is important to properly categorize your assets so that you can properly report on each type. For instance, all of your heating and cooling equipment should be grouped together in an asset classification such as HVAC. Kitchen equipment should be grouped in a category or classification called appliances. Vehicles can be classified under vehicle or fleet. Having these assets classified will allow you to pull the report that will group these assets together. So now what I'm going to do is I'll take you into the actual system and I'm going to show you how to create an asset, then how we can tie that asset to a task and create a transaction. And I'll show you how to pull some important reports. All right, so Dino, can you see my screen there? Uh, not yet, no, nope. actually. Okay, let me just take a look here. Uh, let's go here, bear with me. Perfect. Now, okay. can you see the mountains in the background? Yes. There? Yes, we Beautiful. can. Beautiful. Okay. Wonderful. So, right here, this is your maintenance care platform. So, as you can see, we are on the task page. Now, to create an asset, you will need to go to the admin tab. And the first thing you need to do is create that asset classification. So, as I mentioned, HVAC, appliances, vehicle, those are the classifications that you'll need to create in order to put an asset into the system. So as you can see here, we have a bunch of classifications, uh, general equipment, furniture. It's very easy to add an asset by just clicking on the blue button up at the top and you'll have to put the code in. We generally suggest you put a three to four digit code, uh, just grouping that asset. So if it was HVAC, you would put HVAC, then the name, which would be heating and cooling. And then we would make sure that it's active. When I hit save, it's going to let me know that there's an error. I already have this asset fixed in my asset classification. So what we can do is we can change this out. If we want, we can put HVAC 2 and that would save that record. So the first thing is create that asset classification under your admin tab. The next thing would be going into your cabinet. Um, think of this as a filing cabinet. This is where the assets are all going to be housed. So you'll click on your assets. And as you can see, we have a bunch of assets within this area. What we can do is we can click on add and you'll see here, there's a bunch of different areas that need to be filled out in order to create the asset. However, there are some that are mandatory. So as you can see in red, these items here need to be input into the system in order for you to create that asset, classification being one of them. So your asset code, um, asset code can be anything from, let's say we're going to have a bed, 
Now, we do suggest that you enter in a numeric number if you have multiples. Um, the reason being is we want to make sure that if we have 50 beds, we can go bed 001, 002, 003, and so on and so forth. So as you grow your assets, uh, you can certainly put them into here and still have room for uh, multiples. You'll want to make sure that you have your status as active. The facility, so if you have multiple facilities, you'll be able to drop down and select what facility it's going to be in. Your asset classification, again, that's very important because we need to group these together. So let's go ahead and say for this particular asset, it is bed, we're gonna put it under furniture. The description. Description is also an important area because when you're pulling the information from your main page and you're searching for the assets, it's going to pull not only from the asset code, but it's going to pull from the description as well. So the more descriptive you can be, the better. So let's put in here bed with wheels and rails. Now the date purchased. Some of you will know the date purchased if it's a new asset, if it's a new building, a new facility. Um, some of you may not know the date purchased uh, because you're working with older assets that are already in the building. Um, so what we suggest doing is if you know the date, of course, put the date in that you know. If you don't, we suggest putting in a date that you think the assets age is. So for instance, let's just go in and say we've purchased this building a couple years ago. We don't know the asset age, but we can guesstimate that we purchased it back in, let's say, 2016. So we're going to make sure that we're putting in an estimated date and we'll just use uh, 12. There we go. The other area is a warranty. If you don't know the warranty, you can leave that blank. If you do know the warranty, it's very helpful to put it in. Your vendor, if you have a list of vendors that you've purchased all of this equipment from, you can certainly enter those into maintenance care and you can actually just drop down and select the vendor that it was purchased from. So in here we can purchase, uh, let's say it was from Michael's Bed Supplies. Make, model, serial number, all of these are also very important to put in. Again, it's just the more information you put into maintenance care, the more you're going to get out of it. You're going to be able to report on these things and pull up uh, different reports based on these details. So the make is a bed bed model. And serial number. Now, location, if you know where the bed is going to be. The floor, if you have multiple areas within your facility, so different floors. The room number, also very important. Now, with certain assets, they are not fixed and they are movable, like beds, for instance. So we never suggest putting the room number in your asset code or the description, as you may move this bed to another room. So if you want to, just put the bed and the description and add the room down below. We can even put in the unit cost. So if you know how much you've purchased this particular unit for, you can put that in. If you don't, you can leave that blank. Now we're going to go ahead and save that, and we've just saved our asset. Now how we can go ahead and look up this asset is either by the name, the description, or just an other comment. We can put up the name, and we'll just put bed, and you can see that that bed 101 has populated. Now when I open this up, you're going to notice that there's a bunch of other areas that you can fill out. So in here, you can put in some custom fields. We can even put a tag ID if you have that for the particular asset. You can add specific notes. Documents are great. So if you actually have a uh, manual that goes with this asset, um, any uh, purchase order, let's say, you can put it under the documents field to keep it in that asset. Your parts. This would be anything that's been uh, linked to your asset. So we will do another webinar on parts and inventory, um, I believe next month, um, but we can review that at that time. However, you can configure your parts to the asset so it's easy to pull the part and create a transaction. I'm going to skip over transaction tab for the moment being because we're gonna actually tie this to a transaction on a task in a moment. But the other area would be your forecasting area. And this area is very important. So if we go back to your details, you've noticed here you had unit cost, yearly inflation, replacement cost, salvage, um, and so on and so forth. So as we can see, we've purchased this for $1,100. We can go ahead and we can say, 
that the yearly inflation is going to be 3%. And we're going to say that we have a life expectancy on this of 10 years. Once we've put this information in, it's going to actually spit out a replacement cost. So in 10 years, at a 3% inflation, it's going to take us to 1478 to purchase this particular bed again. If we wanted to, we can even put in a salvage price. So let's say we receive $100 salvage once this bed is done and sold off, or um, we've given this away and we've got $100 for it. You can go into straight line depreciation. So in here, you're gonna see year after year the depreciating value of this particular unit. Once you put that information in, you can go into your forecasting tab and we're just gonna put in 10 years because we know that life expectancy. Now we've purchased this in 2016, 10 years is the life expectancy based on where we are now. Our maximum spend is 341. So we really shouldn't be spending any more than $341 on replacing parts on this bed or fixing it. If we are going to be spending more than that, it's really time for us to look at replacing the asset as a whole. So you can see here that we've got the life expectancy and we've used about 80% of it. So now let's go and tie this asset to a transaction. So how you do that is we're just going to go to our status tab under the tasks. Everybody's familiar with their main page here. This is where your preventative maintenance as well as your work orders come through. So what we'll do is we're going to actually just add a new task. So in here, we're going to select the facility. So we're going to be using the kingdom. Our status is new because it's a new task that we're creating. The duration we're going to leave because that's going to be the duration of time that we've taken to complete the task. The type is very important. So we need to make sure we're putting this in, which will be equipment repair. The classification itself. So let's go through and see what class this is. Um, let's go in and say this is going to be a project that we're doing. The area you can select here. So we're going to say it's floor two. The room number is 201. That's where the bed's located. And then, of course, we can put the phone number or the email address. Once we've done that, we're going to enter our comment. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and hit save. Now we have our new task that's just come through. So in here, we can open this up. We can, of course, assign it to a user if we need to. So you can certainly go through and assign it. Let's assign it to me. I'll be the one doing the work today. So we've assigned it to myself. I'm going to go ahead and create a transaction now for this particular asset. So under your transaction tab, I have my asset code. So again, that code is very important and the description is very important. I can just simply type in bed and that bed will populate here. Now keep in mind on the asset part as well, you can add an image of the actual bed and it will pull up into this area as well so that you just have that imagery of what you're working on and you can verify that that is the bed that you in fact need to add the parts. So in here, we can have configured parts. We don't currently have configured parts. As I mentioned, we will talk about configuring parts and how all of that works when we do our parts webinar next month. So I'm just going to click on any and I'm going to go down and let's find a part that we need for this bed. Right here is the bed wheels. So let's go ahead and say we need to change four of the wheels on this bed. We're going to add four. Once we've done that, we can hit OK. And you can see here we have a running total of 119.96. So that's taken all four wheels into account. Now we can add a vendor. So if we needed to, we could certainly put in um, the vendor that we are, or who's helping us work with this. So we had Michael's beds in here. We're just gonna try and find that, bear with me. Right there, Michael's bed supply. Now you can also add in a GL code. So if your accounting department has GL codes for you, you can put those in that coincide with the particular work order that you're doing. A meter, this would be great for vehicles. So you can put the odometer reading in here every time you're working on that particular vehicle. Um, labor, amount, tax. This is great for when a vendor provides you with a invoice. You can put their amounts in here and it will start to calculate the full total of what this costing is. Now, the vendor just supplied the bed who, which we've already purchased, so we're going to leave that blank for the moment. Once we've done that, we're going to go back to our uh, details side and we're going to close out this work order in three easy steps. So close, it's taken us 35 minutes to complete and we're going to just make sure we put our note in. And important.
important to know, make sure that you're always checking off your timestamp. This will allow anybody going into the system to know when this was done, who did it, and of course the, the time. Now that that's completed, we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit save, and we've just closed out that work order. Going back into our cabinet where our assets are housed, we can certainly go in and just look up the bed, we'll open this up, and under this transaction tab, we've created a transaction. So now you can see that we've completed the task, the total amount in parts that we've spent. If the vendor did charge us for his amount, that would populate here. And we also have the time or duration that we spent on this. You can double click and open up this. Oh, this won't open up. Ah, I know why. It's the only one that I have. If you have multiples, you'll be able to open them up and determine which is um, which. So that is your asset transaction. So creating that task, putting the transaction to the asset and reporting on that in here. What I'm going to show you now is some important reports that you can pull in the reporting field. So going into your reports, you'll just hit your asset report here and you have um, different areas within that asset report. One being your barcodes. If you click on barcodes, you're gonna see here that you have different options for your barcodes. Every asset that you have within maintenance care will populate a barcode. You'll be able to pull these barcodes and stick them to the asset themselves. And with the mobile app, you'll be able to scan these barcodes and pull up the information. So as you can see, we have barcode Avery 5264, uh, barcode Avery 6576. This means that Avery label 5264, this is configured to that label. We also have Dymo, so if you have a Dymo printer, you can pull the assets based on the, or sorry, the barcodes based on the Dymo um, size, and you can just configure it and print there. By clicking on one of these and submitting, you'll see here that we have all the asset barcodes populated. It's very important to note that you must export this into a PDF by exporting up here before you print these barcodes. Once you purchase the Avery labels and you export to PDF, you'll be able to print it right to your printer and it will size up with the Avery label that you have. So that's where you find your barcodes. Now going back into our asset report, going into our general tab, we have the forecast. This is a very important report to pull when you're doing your um, forecasting or your capital planning. So once we open up this report here, I'm just gonna go to the area that I have been working in, which is the kingdom. So once we've done that, it's gonna pull the assets within that particular facility. So you have different areas, asset class that we can um, sort by, we can sort by group. One of the best groupings is the life maturation year. So let's take a look at that report. So as you can see here, we have the life maturation in years. So 2015, 16, um, 2020, and so on and so forth. You will notice here that we have the unit cost as well as the replacement cost. So as you can see, 2019, we have a replacement cost for these two particular units of $26,000. So what we can do with this report is we can start to plan ahead, put the money away for these larger repairs or replacements just based on this report alone. You can also pull this report and you can see life expectancy, bear with me here, if I could just move this over. A participant. There we go. My apologies. Life expectancy by percent is what we're looking at here. So as you can see here, we have zero to 10%. We have 20%, 30%, and so on and so forth. So what you'll notice here is we have 151% in the red here. So this central unit, it's only within the 10% of its life. However, we've already overspent on this just based on our reporting here. So as you can see, we're 151% over our value spend. So right now we can take a look at that particular asset, jump in, see what sort of parts we've been putting into it, what transactions are in there. Um, is there something that's reoccurring constantly? That's when you can reach out to the vendor, find out if there's a warranty still on it or if there's a recall, you can continue to fix it or you can replace it knowing that there's something wrong with this particular unit. So those are the three reports that I would pull um, based on your um, assets being in the system and your forecasting needs. Dino, you know, that concludes the webinar 101 on assets. I'll pass it over to you for questions.
All right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, I've got plenty of them. Uh, they okay. came in and you can still, like I said, uh, just to repeat, you can put your questions, any questions that you may have in the Q&A uh, section of the Ring Central application. Um, all right. Let me start with Wendy. Uh, Wendy's asking for entering the assets. If we are setting this up for the first time, is there a way to load an Excel spreadsheet with all the details into the system instead of adding them one by one? I Most definitely. Yes. Yeah. Thank Go you. ahead. So. With that, Wendy, um, yes, you can certainly do that. We actually have a template that we will send you. It will have all the information that's required in order to do a bulk upload. Um, so you'll put in all of the asset codes, um, the asset names themselves, the date purchased, all of that information. And you can actually send that into Asset Maintenance Care and we will upload them. That is part of your initial implementation. Um, after that, if there is additional assets, that we could look at costing, but uh, depends, of course, on how many and um, yeah, but you can right. certainly do that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Venue asks, uh, how do we track the expense spent on each piece of equipment? So I think you showed that with the uh, report, but you can go ahead. Yes, most definitely. So there is a transaction report. I don't believe we dove into the actual transaction report itself, but if you do go into your reports and you go to assets, you're going to see that there's a report called transactions. So anything that you've linked to the actual asset will fall under this transaction report. So if you have gone in, created your task, even if it's a preventative maintenance and you've attached that transaction to the, that asset, you can open up your transaction report and you can of course change the parameters the filters the layout um, and it will show you all the transactions um, that are within the parameters that you've asked it for you can export it to excel or pdf or even print it if you need to perfect thank you thank you michael uh catherine asked a question it, i think it relates to the when you went to create a task mm -hmm. uh, what if the vendor is not in the drop down list can you put the vendor's name in it that's essentially what she's asking so you can't enter the vendor within the actual task itself unless they're in the system so how you would do that is in your cabinet You'll see you have assets, parts, which again, I mentioned, we'll talk about in another webinar, and then you have your vendors. So your vendors would need to be added into the system in order for you to drop them down and select. So when you receive um, equipment or even parts from the vendors, my suggestion is to go into maintenance care and add them in right away. Even if they're just a one-off vendor, you don't need to go into too much detail. You can simply put their name um, and the vendor that they are in the category of work they do and just keep it simple so that you can attach them to that. Um, of course, you can add their address, city contact number, and so on and so forth if they're vendors that you're using on a regular basis. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Um, venue is asking, uh, is there any integration with Yardi for this type of tracking? Um, I can so, answer that one if you want yeah, to, or you want ahead, to yes, go yeah. ahead. No, 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 no go, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, well, no, actually, you. yes, we, there's two ways to do it with Yardi and any other financial uh, software you may have like QuickBooks. Uh, we've got Zapier, which is an API that is a, um, a software, a third party software that is offered. Uh, it's free of charge for a certain number of transactions. You can go on zapier.com, I believe, and find that information. Or we do have our own API that we can provide, uh, and that is to be discussed with our IT team. And uh, there are some processes to go through, but it can be done, absolutely. Catherine is asking, okay, this one, Catherine, I think we would need to know which um homes you're working with because you're asking is all of this active for all homes now actually um all part if you've got the enterprise edition uh, you do have access to that now is it active depends on uh, which home you have uh, you're managing and uh, and that could be looked with uh michael if you need some uh, you've mm -hmm. got some questions related to your specific home you can reach out to michael via email or, or your phone call uh, at all times, and he can probably pinpoint that specific facility if you're using it. And we can establish, you can probably establish a plan with you to mm -hmm. make sure that you use that part of the software. Of course, yeah. And another thing to go on that, Dino, too, is just to remember everybody, you do have the support. So within maintenance care, uh, just on the yeah. left hand side here, you, you can see we've got support. 
uh, the phone number. Should you click on this, it will bring you to a page that you can enter in a email. Uh, we have live chat. We also have the option for you to call us. Um, and then we do have what's called our online wiki, which is a very helpful tool. If you want to troubleshoot yourself, you can click on this online wiki and just type in any of the issues that you're having. Uh, let's say you're looking at uploading an asset. You could even just put the word asset in and everything will uh, populate that coincides with assets, uploading it, um, transactions, all of that will be there for you. There's videos and all that. Thank you, Michael. I forgot about that. Thank you for bringing it up. Um, Sarah, is this been being recorded and sent out? Yes, it is being recorded. Uh, once it's recorded, I think you will get an email, a mass, mass marketing email like you got for this one, the newsletter. And there is a link on our uh, YouTube channel that will be provided. And uh, it takes about, like I said, two weeks to get this uploaded on our YouTube channel. And uh, yes, it'll be done. Um, you could probably check out the YouTube channel we have um, and um, check out all the videos that we have. And I think, too, if you go on onto our maintenancecare.com website, uh, under, I think it's, um, I'm not sure if it's under blog, you get all the recordings there. Uh, of all the webinars that have been blog, done yes. in the past. Yes, you can do that. All right, thank you. Um, venue, can you use this process to inspect equipment and log results like temperatures and pressures? Uh, that's the first question, if you can answer that one, Michael. So can you use this process to inspect equipment and log results like temperatures and pressures? So, yes, you can attach it to a preventative maintenance. That would be more of your preventative maintenance. You would put that into the system under your scheduler, but then you would attach the asset to that preventative maintenance so that it coincides with the work that's being done. So the answer is yes, you would go into your scheduler, you'd scheduler that um, so that you can either have a debt set. We won't dive into that yet, but you can have a debt set where it's a determined set of questions that you need to answer in order to comply. Uh, you could have a fillable form in your scheduler, but again, that asset can be attached to it. So all the work that's being done with that preventative maintenance ties to the asset itself. Excellent. And the second question relates to that too, and I think you just answered it. It's can this process be used to log monthly inspection of fire extinguishers and other life safety equipment? And I think you just hundred percent. Right? Yeah. And again, like Dino mentioned, if you have any um, detailed questions where you want to learn more about the preventative maintenance and tying them to the assets and even um, grouping them, uh, you please feel free to reach out. We can certainly do um, some training sessions on how that can be done. All right, thank you. David asks, and I this one, how do you scan in 1D and 2D barcodes? That one, I'm not sure. I know that, Ooh. well, you, you can tell them about the app itself. Uh, yes, so app. on the application, um, your phone app, you're actually going to have an area called Asset. It's just at the bottom beside your task. Once you click on that Asset um, icon, it's going to bring up all the assets. At the top, it's going to actually have a scan button or feature where you're going to hit scan and you can scan the actual barcode right from your camera on the either um, if it's a phone or if it's a tablet, of course, it needs to have the camera um, and you'll be able to scan it and it will populate all of the information that's in the asset transactions. Um, like I mentioned, the documents are even in there. So if you do put manuals in, you can pull up the manual. Um, for instance, I'll show you very quickly here one of the assets that I do have in my system, and I'll show you some of the documents that I've put in and that would pull. If we go to our commercial fridge, this is one. So as you, as I mentioned, you can upload images, um, but once you scan, it's gonna pull all of this information down to even the documents. So as you can see here, I have a manual and this would also pull. Now talking about the 3D, um, labels or, or scanning that feature, I'm not sure about, but I know just basic, um, Basically scanning, scanning from yeah. your mobile app. Yeah, I think yeah. that that's a, that's what uh, he meant. Uh, Shelly, uh, can you print an individual barcode? Example, just want a barcode for one dryer that we have set up as an asset. You can certainly print one barcode. Um, you would have to go into your reports. Barcodes. And just trying to find it's been a while since I printed just one barcode. Bear with me for one moment here. I know that Dymo does it yes, individually. Right. Yeah. I'm just thinking I'm not I might not be in the right one. 
Well, I think you got it. So this would, you would have to search. Oh, oh yeah. it's going to go and go and go. But you would have to search through to find which one and then print it, uh, print it from here. But this will do one at a time. Okay. Thank you. Can this tool be set up to send out reminders to conduct PM tasks or inspections? So you would do that right in the scheduler. Um, so you would do that in your preventative maintenance. So you would schedule your task. You would attach the asset to it. So for fire safety, that's a great one um, to use. So you could do your fire inspections monthly, set them up in preventative maintenance, attach those fire extinguishers that you have that are assets within your building to that preventative maintenance. And it can be scheduled uh, monthly, weekly, daily. It depends on your frequency. Thank you. Enrique, can expenses be pulled by year to see trending on department uh, depart departmental expenditures? Expenses by year. Can he uh, meaning can he um, can he do uh, yearly reports? Can you schedule reports essentially? I'm guessing. Oh, most definitely. So again, in your transaction reports, you can schedule these reports. If you go into your reports again, your assets. Um, let's go to transactions. This is a great one. If you were to pull this, change the parameters, you can schedule the report just by clicking on this schedule button and you would follow the instructions in here to schedule your report to hit yearly, uh, to hit weekly, monthly, depending on when you want that report in your inbox. And it will have all the transaction information that you need based on the assets. So each asset would be separated and yes, it would have that uh, detailed in there. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Venue is asking, do you recommend us providing access to this portal to a third party vendor? Hmm. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't even I'm no, I have no words. No, um, your maintenance care should be for your staff and your and your team only. Um, there are very, very, very few instances where a vendor has worked with a company for many, 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 many years, and they know the, the, the business inside and out. Some companies will allow their vendors to have access, but we do not recommend that on a regular basis. We, we don't. Thank you. Um, also asking, how do, how do you build a parts catalog with little pain? Well, I think you'll need to be part of the next um, webinar next month mm -hmm. uh, because yes. it's going to be the subject matter of this uh, venue. Yeah. We're going to talk about how to build it, how to keep up with the inventory, how to create it, etc. So, mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Sue, uh, would maintenance be entering into both maintenance care, repair, and assets management when they repair an item? Um, I.e., the motor fails on a bed there will be a cost to the new motor. Today, they would enter the repair into maintenance care and close the mm -hmm. item. In the future, will they also be able to also go into the asset management and to add in the cost of the part? I... So that would be done in your, your, your part. So when you, so what you would do is you would receive the part, you would put it into your parts, then you would link that part to the asset and then you could put it in. Um, if you don't have the part, you can't, repair the part or or replace the part so yeah no not sure exactly no. so yeah, you need you need to put it in prior to so yeah you're right so the bed is the asset the motor is mm -hmm. the part in this case so if you want yeah. to trend the motor meaning you want it to keep up with um the cost and, and inventory of motors you maybe have more than one that will be part of the parts. Yes, you're right, parts mm -hmm. and inventory. As for the asset, it is linked automatically when you do the transaction like uh, Michael showed you. Mm -hmm. um, what, okay, what will show up when you scan the barcode? I think you, you talked about that. Uh, mm -hmm. You can probably go back to see uh, what me, they will see. Uh, let me just see here. If we have a moment, I'm going to. Oh, Michael's going to try to connect. I'm going to connect. Let's do this. We will. I'm not sure if we'll have a full webinar on the mobile app, but we will. We will in the Perfect. future. Okay. And I think you'll be doing it. So. <laughs> oh, wonderful. There we go. <laughs> you learn something um, new every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Later so on, me... probably this fall, I'm guessing. Um, Catherine, uh, you gave me the name of your facility. Thank you for that. I, uh, what I would suggest is you reach out to our support team with your name and just to make sure that we do have, you do um, have um, your assets all um, done already, uh, your list uh, uploaded. If not, then you can reach out to us and we can help you build uh, that plan. 
moving forward. So there you go. We see For the sure. asset yeah. in the meantime. The uh, the uh, the so app. Here sorry. we are. Yeah. So log into your mobile app here. So you can see this is your main page, your tasks. Um. Now in here, I'm just going to move that off. Oh. We'll just keep that where it is. So down here, as I mentioned, you have your task tab, then you have your asset tab. Once you click on your asset tab, you are going to have all of the assets populate. However, when you have your barcode, you're going to be able to hit the scan feature here, and you're going to be able to scan that barcode, and it's going to actually populate the information that you need. So let's just say, I don't have the barcode in front of me, but let's just say that we scanned that commercial fridge. Once we've scanned it, it's going to actually pull up all of this information, the code, the vendor you purchased it from, the purchase date, warranty, description, all of the information that you've put into the main system is going to be able to be pulled through the mobile app. Now, you're also able to look at the transactions by clicking on that transaction button here. You see all of the transactions that have been done to this particular unit. You can open them up at any time and see what work was done um, down to even the comments and the notes go back you can also see the life expectancy so this fridge for instance is at a nine percent life expectancy um, and you can even add a task to this particular asset if you needed to right through the mobile app if we go back we also have the option to go into our documents tab and in our documents tab as i mentioned you can put in the documents field in its care all of these documents and at your fingertips on the mobile app you have all of that information. So you can see here, it's pulled that manual as well. So I can truly be mobile with the app and doing the work that I need to do. So I don't need to spend the time in the office. I can spend the time out in the field completing these tasks. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, David is asking for inventory tracking. Are you able to add asset image, barcode and copy of the invoices and service invoices? Hmm. Yeah, and I'll show you. So once we, yeah. you can certainly do that. Um, once we get into the, so you can do that two ways. One would be in your, in your actual asset itself in the documents tab, you can put all of the documents that you, that coincide with it. But another one would be going into your parts. And if your parts are going to be attached to the asset, you can add images of the parts. You can add images of the, the storage rooms that the parts are in. There's a lot of options, but we will dive into that at our next webinar. Thank you. Um, Margaret is asking, oh, I, I think uh, you probably misunderstood me. Uh, she's asking if the okay. IM Care app will be available in the fall. Actually, it's already available. It, the What's going to be happening in the fall is probably the webinar on the IM Care. Um, yes, so, yeah, the mobile app is available. Uh, yes. Then I, I I guess if you haven't gotten the app yet, haven't downloaded, I, I suggest you do it uh, as soon as possible. It's one of their their main uh, the, one of the main tools of our system uh, that is uh, used by thousands of people uh, because um, maintenance people don't have the time of day probably to go back to the office and take care of the business on their desktop. They use the app to do the work. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. Well, I, that's it. It, complete, it seems to be completed. I don't have any more questions. Uh, thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you, Michael, for the work you did. Thank and, you. Um, and like, he, like Michael said, um, next month will be about parts and inventory. And uh, should you have any more questions uh, related to this matter that we just addressed, uh, you can submit them via, like I said, uh, send an email support uh, phone call, support chat, anything that you might have uh, related to asset management. We will help you uh, with our team from um, 8.30 to 5, uh, Monday to Friday, Eastern Standard Time. Thank you all. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, everybody. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.